is working out. <laughs> when you need help, get help. Amen. Somebody need to hear that this morning. <laughs> when you need help, get help. Amen. 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 So this day, this day's message will be when the Lord revisits you. When the Lord revisits you. Lord, I thank you for this morning. I thank you for your spirit. I thank you for being with us and keeping us and just watching over us, Lord. Amen. As we went through another day, another month, another week, another year, you are still faithful, Lord. Amen. I thank you that you are faithful in all things, that we, we cannot exhaust your faithfulness. We Amen. cannot exhaust your mercies, and yes. we cannot exhaust the goodness that our God has for us. Yes. I thank you that it is continually replenished daily, momentarily, yes. instantaneously, yes. Yes. even replenished before I think about it. So, I thank you, Lord. Your grace is truly sufficient for us. Amen. We pray for those that are in harm's way and those that are going through. Lord, you be with them. We pray for all the nations that are just confused. People arguing about wars and foreign lands and, and trying to argue with people here that have nothing to do with that over there. And Lord, we just pray that the, the people just learn to get along. Amen. They just get along, Lord. They quit being so quick to be offended, so quick to take everything personal, Lord. We just pray for patience amen. and kindness to pray. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So when the Lord revisits you, uh, yesterday was a uh, interesting time we had the ministerial alliance meeting at uh the surf restaurant and uh juan thomas was there he just recently finished his doctorate he's a reverend reverend dr juan thomas <laughs> so, but uh a few years ago he was the lawyer for this young teenage girl that was accused of stealing some ear pods in uh, naperville high school and the whole case went down and the police officer got upset and, and you know all iPod earbuds are basically white. Mm -hmm. And so she saw them on the desk and she thought they were hers and she took them home and another girl accused they were stealing. And then even he was saying during the court case, the police officer got upset because the mother didn't return his call immediately. Mm -hmm. And so he charged her with offense and then they wanted her to play the plea deal and pay a hundred dollar fine, but it went on her permanent record. Yeah. Yeah. So the mother fought. And it took him almost three to four years before the case was won. Mm -hmm. So now, fast forward to today, Wednesday, he'll be meeting with all, he has the pastors and those that want to come to City Hall at Naperville on uh, Wednesday at 11, because they're suing Naperville because of what they did to this young lady. But this weekend, I believe, she's graduating from Spillman College and she doesn't have anything on her record. That's right. And it was just saying that, you know, these, these city, mm -hmm. these community police officers, mm -hmm. they get carried away sometimes. Mm -hmm. Things that used to be taken care of in the in the office of the principal mm -hmm. now become legal things yes. that can yes. mar your record. Yes. And, and she, you know, she was studying to be an attorney, and so that would have disqualified her to be an attorney because she had a criminal record yes. over some yes. ear pies. Yeah. So, you know, I told him I, I would come and show up with him too, just as support, because uh, it's just sometimes you gotta we gotta get back to common sense. Yeah. We can't just let everything be an offense that it blows up. So when I was thinking about this messy, and it was funny because one of the things Juan said is people make mistakes as a young person mm -hmm. that will catch up with them later that just young people do stupid things. And I was sitting there with uh, Dr. Hicks and her mother. I was like, I can agree with that. I said, you know, I said, by the time I was 17, I had seven felonies. And they, what, Bishop? I said, yeah. I said, I had seven felonies. I said, I had a habit of wanting to steal cars and drink. And every time you get caught with a stolen car, it was automatically anything over $150 was considered grand larceny or grand theft. So automatically it was a felon each time they caught me. And so I'll just tell it a little bit. And they were talking, ooh, we never would have thought you'd be through all that. And I told them, but the good thing is all my offenses were done before computers. And so everything I did has been a race. And I told him, even when I joined the Army and they did an FBI search on me, my record came back clear because they didn't find anything. And so that just shows you how God can cover over a multitude of sins because he had a plan for me later down the road that I needed to have a clean record for. And even, I remember at one time I was 
upset because I was the only one of my friends that was not on probation. You know, everybody's on probation. And, you know, and then I was proud when I finally got a record. <laughs> you, know, you know, it was just, you know, I wanted to be like everybody else. <laughs> you know, and I guess my friends were part of the influence because I should have had a better crowd. But, it, but even so, my probation officer, he would make everybody else go down there and meet with him, and he never made me go. He just put me on probation. I saw him the day he put me on, and the day he let me off. He just told me, I'm not going to put you through what you put them through. And I'm like, you know, I wanted to be like everybody else, <laughs> but he wouldn't do it. And then when I got on probation in Kentucky, the other guy told me, I ain't even going to give you no rules. He said, you ain't going to follow them no way. <laughs> you know, he said, that's the first time I've had a better. But he just said, looking at me, he knew I wasn't going to follow the rules anyway. So he just told me to go. I mean, that just shows you how God can take you at one place. And he will take and revisit where you're at on that day. Amen. And say, it's time to change what All you've right. been doing. Right. It's time to change you. Yes. 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 So I'm going to start out with uh, the book of Judges 13. And then we'll end up in 1 Samuel 3. We'll talk about visitations. A visitation in the Bible, and um, it means a regular visit from God in biblical terms. Now, it wasn't that unusual. You had people like Adam that God walked in the cool of the garden with him. Yeah. You had people like Enoch that he visited him so much that God took him without death. Mm -hmm. You had Noah. You know, he didn't just come to Noah one day and say, build this ark. He visited Noah many times. Yeah. And then you had Moses. It said Moses talked to God as a man talked to another man. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, he's going down the line. Joshua and these other ones that met face to face mm -hmm. with him. Elijah. And when he told him, you won't see my face because my face is too glorious, so I'll just let you see my back. Mm -hmm. So these were visitations of God. Mm -hmm. In many ways, God shows himself even today through uh, divination. You may have dreams and visions and signs and wonders. There's many ways God has showed himself to the saints today. Amen. You can just show up somewhere and know that God is there. Yes. Yes. You can go through a situation with somebody and know that God is there. Amen. You can be avoiding cussing somebody out or choking somebody yeah. because you know God yeah. is there. <laughs> you know? A lot of people like to tell you, boy, if you'd have met me 10 years ago, 20 years ago, you know, it, it, it'd have been on. But because the Lord is in my life, I'm going to let you go. So we got to be careful of these visitations we have and cherish them. So I looked up the word for it, and it meant um, pico da is the Greek word, which means oversight, care, custody, mustering. A visitation is to store something, a visitation. A visitation also can mean punishment. It's oversight. The charge, an officer, or overseer is part of the visitation. They visit, you know, as I said, I had a probation office. They would stop by your house and visit, you know. Well, they visit my brother, they didn't visit me. But, you know, but it was a, it's a visitation. Mm -hmm. So and then he said the account, you know, when you think about it in biblical terms, it's in the investigation or inspection of a man or woman's character. And the deeds with the view of appropriating them to do God's will. Mm -hmm. So when God is visiting you, he's visiting you for your character, your attributes, that he may be able to use them for his will. Mm -hmm. And he also can visit you for punishment. Mm -hmm. And then he can visit you for mercy. Mm -hmm. So a visitation from God, even in today's terms, they say the city inspector is going to visit a certain, such and such a restaurant. Or if you have children in DCFS, you have to put up with visitations from DCFS. You know, a visitation has many terms that we use it for today. But it includes an evaluation or an inspection or some formal aspect. And a, vis a visitation must have some type of record. We don't just visit for nothing. We visit because we want to see how you're doing. Now we get to revisit, which means to visit again. Uh-huh. Or to consider or discuss something. If we revisit an issue that I have with you, people tell you don't go to bed angry and all that and let it go, but some people wake up in the morning and want to pick up where they left off the <laughs> night before. You, know, so you got to be careful of those revisits. Yeah. Yeah. People say, I forgive, but I don't forget. Well, if you forgive and don't forget, you haven't let go. Okay. Forgiving and forgetting have to be together. 
You can't keep coming and, you know, you can't keep that over my head that one day I'm going to repay you. One day I'm going to get you. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, biblically, you have to let that go. And it also means that um, if we get to Judges 13 with the birth of Samson. Mm -hmm. Judges 13, 1. And again, the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord. So the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Philistines for 40 years. 40 years. Now, they say a generation, they count them by every 20 years. If you look at it, every 20 years is another generation and all that. But so 40 years, two generations of the Philistines beat them down. God gave them two years of punishment. And there was a certain man of Zorah named Man Manoah from the clan of the Danites, had a wife who was childless and unable to give birth. And the angel of the Lord appeared to her and said, you are barren and childless, but you are going to become pregnant and give birth to a son. Now, this is just, this angel's coming to her. And they were from the tribe of Dan. Mm -hmm. Now, if you research the tribe of Dan, mm -hmm. the blessings and curses that his father were given out on his deathbed, he said, Dan is a snake by the roadside that's going to bite somebody's right. ankle. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know? so, so that was the blessing he put on him. Judah said, you praise, you know, and then he said, I'm Reuben, you a backstabber. He gave all these the different ones, but when he got down to Dan, he said, you a snake that hides by the roadside. Mm -hmm. So he came from the tribe of the people that are out to get you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, they, they're a snake hiding, mm -hmm. they're waiting on you. So he told her, you're going to become pregnant. In verse 4, now see to it that you drink no wine or fermented drink, and that you do not eat anything unclean. You will become pregnant and have a son whose head is never to be touched by a razor because the boy is to be a Nazarite, dedicated, dedicated to God from the womb. He will take the lead in delivering Israel from the hands of the Philistines. Wow. So Nazarite. A lot of people make the mistake of assuming uh, Jesus was a Nazarite because he was from Nazarene, but he was not a Nazarite. He was, a, he was from the town of Nazarene. And if you go a little bit deeper and you know your Bible, you realize he wasn't really from Nazareth. Mm -hmm. He was supposed to be born in Nazareth. That's where his parents were living. But at the time of the birth, Caesar said, come on and pay some taxes and go back to where you started. So Joseph had to go back to his hometown and then the baby was delivered in Bethlehem. Mm -hmm. So he's truly from Bethlehem. Yes. <laughs> but he always called him Jesus of Nazareth. So you can move to a city and you'll be known as Jeff from Chicago or Jeff from Aurora, but you may have started somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So that's and so when they called him a Nazarite, the Nazarite meant that he was a consecrated one. He was a devotee. He had untrimmed hair and beard and stuff. That meant if you look at when you set up an altar, it said to set up an altar to the Lord. Don't trim the rocks. Don't do any of that stuff because if you try to form it into a man-made image, you're messing up the image that God had made through the river or whatever, Amen. making this rock smooth. Amen. So he said, when you get those rocks, leave them like I made them. Mm -hmm. So he said, when, you, when, he comes, when he's born, I want him to be like an untrimmed vine. Mm -hmm. That's why a lot of Amen. ascetic Jews don't trim their beard and all that because that's part of the sign of a Nazarite vow, that they're, mm -hmm. they're unto the Lord. And mm -hmm. so... Is you look at this, this separate one, and it's a term used 16 times in the Bible, but he's undressed. He's not, he's not shaped by anybody else. And he said, your son is going to be somebody from the womb that's going to be shaped by God. Amen. He's not going to be shaped by man. Hmm. And the woman went to her husband and told him, a man of God came to me. He looked like an angel of God. Very awesome. I didn't ask him where he came from, and he didn't tell me his name. <laughs> that was a smart woman. Right. <laughs> you know, this angel showed up and she didn't have no questions. You, you do whatever you're doing. And, you know, and so she saw this mighty being and she just let the being have his way. But he said to me, you will become pregnant and have a son. Now then, drink no wine or fermented drink and do not eat anything unclean because the boy will be a Nazarite of God from the womb until the day of his death. Then Manoah prayed to the Lord, pardon your servant, Lord. I beg you to let the man you sent to us come again to teach us how to bring up the boy who's to be born. Mm -hmm. So Manoah, this is something that he, he didn't know how to deal with. And so he was saying, Lord, can you come back one more time and give us a little more instruction? Yes, yes. You know, see, sometimes people are afraid to ask God 
to, to, to give them further instruction. Mm -hmm. You're afraid to come to God and ask what he really wants. Mm -hmm. But God is not upset if you ask to be, you know, give me more clarity, right. to let me know right. what this path is. Mm -hmm. You know, he, even when Gideon put down the fleece, mm -hmm. he allowed him to put down the fleece, and the fleece was wet, then he allowed him to put, and the ground was dry, and then he reversed it. Right. But he gave Gideon those two signs to let him know you can ask God questions. See, some people don't feel like they can question God. Now, there's a way to question God. You know, you may have learned as a child there was a way to question your parents. You didn't just go up to your parents and say, what was on your mind? <laughs> you <know? laughs> what was you thinking when you told me that I had to be home at six? You know, so, so there's a way to approach God. <laughs> there's a way to question God. But you can't come putting him on the carpet because you want to chastise God. It don't work that way. <laughs> so he said, pardon your servant. <laughs> yeah. I beg you let the man of God come one more time so I can get some clarity. Mm -hmm. And God heard Manoah, and the angel of God came again to the woman while she was out in the field, but her husband Manoah was not with her. Mm -hmm. And the woman hurried to tell her husband, he is here, the man who appeared to me the other day. So now the man came back again. So there's a lot to unwrap in this. Come on. See, he heard something so unbelievable, unbelievable, he couldn't accept his wife's word for it. So he asked for this revisit. And around the world, even today, women's words aren't accepted as being reliable. In many countries, women can't be a witness. They have to have a man to witness for them. And so that may have been part of his culture, or it may have been that it was so overwhelming what she said that he had to hear it for himself. Be, they're saying this child is going to be the judge of Israel. Now, we have been in 40 years of chaos. Mm -hmm. 40 years of the Philistines beating us down. You know, they had some victories. They had some wins, you know, Goliath and David. They went back and forth. But generally, the Philistines was used as God's switch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Whatever he needed to beat them down, he'd send the Philistines. Mm -hmm. So Manoah got up and followed his wife. And when he came to the man, he said, are you the man who talked to my wife? I am, he said. Now, those of you that are Bible readers, <laughs> you'll recognize what his name was. Yeah. I am. Yeah. Moses asked him, who are you? He said, I am. <laughs> you know, that covers. You don't need to know the name or whatever, but I am whatever you think. I am of whatever you think of God. I am of whatever you need. I am of whatever you're going through. I'm the one in charge of it. I am. So when you see that term in the Bible, it's I am. You know, it, 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 that's, it's capitalized. And mm -hmm. it may be in red if you have a red edition. But when he says, I am, mm -hmm. he said, I am. So Manoah asked him, when your words are fulfilled, what is to be the rule that governs the boy's life and work? And the angel of the Lord answered, your wife must do all that I've told her. She must not eat anything that comes from a grapevine. Nor drink any wine or other fermented drink, nor eat anything unclean. She must do everything I have commanded her. Mm -hmm. Now, the angel of the Lord, we know in the Old Testament, was a Christ mm -hmm. sighting, right? Mm -hmm. And so she was talking directly to Christ. Mm -hmm. Even when people talk about in the Bible, they saw they talk to God. We know biblically, nobody can look on the face of God the Father and live. Mm -hmm. So when you talk to God, you was talking to Christ. Mm -hmm. when, when Jacob wrestled in that garden, he wrestled with Christ. Mm -hmm. He didn't wrestle with God the Father. Mm -hmm. And the people that don't understand the Trinity, that's a whole nother thing. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, but this is God has manifested himself in three, yet he's one. Mm -hmm. But then, so he said, right, he asked him about the rules. Now the angel of the Lord gave the man the rules, you know, after this time, after that, he came back and did it a different way. He gave the rules to the woman. Because mm -hmm. you may recall in the garden the last time the man got the rules. He got them wrong. <laughs> you know? So this time when the angel visited, he talked to the woman first <laughs> and not to the man. So you can't say this woman you gave me. So he, he was cutting this off right quick. And Manoah said to the angel of the Lord, we would like you to stay until we prepare a young goat for you. And the angel of the Lord replied, even though you detain me, I will not eat any of your food. But if you prepare a burnt offering and offer it to the Lord, you know, Manoah did not realize that it was the angel of the Lord. So God will extend his visit to allow you to process his plan. God will extend his visits 
to allow you to process what he's trying to tell you. Amen. God will wait with you till you figure it yes. out. That's what I want you to know. God will wait with you till your mind can wrap around what he's telling you. So he's saying, wait while I go prepare a goat and all this. And the Lord said, I'm going to let you detain me, but I won't eat what you prepare. So even though you detain me, I'll wait. So God will pause for what you're going through yeah. and let you get a piece about what God is telling you. Amen. Amen. Then Manoah inquired of the angel of the Lord, what is your name so that I may honor you when your word comes true? He replied, why do you ask my name? It's beyond understanding. If I told you my name, you couldn't encompass what it meant. If I told you my name, you wouldn't know what all is wrapped into my name. Wow. My name is the name that is above every other name. My name is the name that when it's uttered, your elements stop. Mm -hmm. Animals stop. Humans stop. Mm -hmm. When my name is spoken, everything that's living pays attention. Amen. And it, it requires its kept. Everything that's dead will get up when I speak my name. Amen. So he said, when my name is mm -hmm. mentioned, why are you asking my name? Don't you realize what's going on? And I've appeared to you and I've given you this great prophecy. Amen. I'm allowing you to offer sacrifice. See, Amen. other angels don't allow sacrifice in worship. Amen. Only the angel of the Lord Amen. will accept worship Amen. because he is God. Amen. Other angels will tell you, I'm going to serve it like you. Angel means sent one. Yeah. You know, so they'll let you know I'm sent as a messenger. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not God. Mm -hmm. But this angel took, he took the sacrifice. Then Manoah took a young goat together with a grain offering and sacrificed it on a rock to the Lord. And the Lord did an amazing thing when, when, while Manoah and his wife watched as the flame blazed up from the altar towards the heaven, the angel of the Lord ascended in the flame. Mm -hmm. Seeing this, Manoah and his wife fell with their faces to the ground. Mm -hmm. So when the sacrifice was made, the flame of the sacrifice, the angel went through the fire wow. and disappeared. Wow. Wow. You know, it didn't burn him, it didn't hurt him, it didn't harm him, but him and the sacrifice both disappeared. Yeah, God. That was a complete sacrifice. Wow. It was, shoo, wow. they both disappeared. Wow. And when the angel of the Lord did not show himself again to Manoah and his wife, Manoah realized it was the angel of the Lord. It takes, sometimes it's a little, we don't get there when God wants us to. <laughs> <laughs> but but we, we will get there. <laughs> and then he said, oh, we are doomed to die, he said to his wife. We've seen God. But his wife answered, if the Lord meant to kill us, he would not have accepted the burnt offering and the grain offering from our hands. Now show us all the things he, things are not, he's now told us. Amen. So if God was going to kill you, he would have killed us the first time. He would not have accepted the sacrifice and all that. You, I know the law says if we see God, we did. But God didn't come here to kill us. Right. And that's sometimes we don't realize that God's mission is not to destroy you. Yeah, People yeah, say that yeah, I've been yeah, going yeah. through this, I've been yes, going through yeah, that. Yeah. You know, why is the Lord mad at me? Why, why have all these problems mm -hmm. in my life? Yeah. And you know, one thing we don't realize, a lot of our problems that we deal with aren't our problems. Mm -hmm. yeah. They're problems we take on ourselves uh -huh. or we get involved in. Yeah, yeah. I tell you, you know, I remember the nuns used to tell me in Catholic school, you know, remember the 11th commandment. 11th commandment was mind thine own business. <laughs> they said that you know, all the time. Remember the 11th commandment, mind thine own business. <laughs> you know, stay out of other folks' business. Wow. So the woman gave birth to a boy and she named him Samson. He grew and the Lord blessed him. And the spirit of the Lord began to stir in him while he was in Manna and Dan and between Zorah and Esther. So Samson grew to this mighty man of God. But if you study Samson's life, he forgot that he was called to be a Nazarite. Yes, yes. He forgot that he was called to lead the people. Mm -hmm. Now he led the people in battle and he got great victories and he killed a bunch of Philistines, but at the same time, he was worldly. Mm -hmm. And when you have worldly people that are representing God, Ooh, they do more harm to the kingdom yes, yes, yes. than more good. Yes. So you gotta be careful getting caught up on these celebrities and stuff that people are more celebrity than they are of God mm -hmm. people that want these places of high position and they want this recognition you know I always like that when Jesus said when you come into a place sit in the back mm -hmm. and if they want you to be in the place of honor let them call you up mm -hmm. but don't come and sit in the front up front mm -hmm. and then somebody greater than you shows up and they, excuse me there's somebody more important than you can, can you step down <laughs> you know so you, you know let the Lord exalt you 
But Samson, the back and forth and drinking and hanging out with prostitutes and mm -hmm. this was God's messenger. Yeah. This was God's judge. And then you got mad because of something they did to you and you tear the gates off the city and take them, on, take them with you. Yeah. You know, just stuff he was doing just to antagonize them. Yeah. And they telling them, don't you know the Philistines rule over us? They've been beating us down for years. You keep going up there doing stuff that's going to get us all killed. Right. And right. they got to the point where they told Samson, look, we're coming to capture you. You know, Samson was laughing at him, though. Is this all you bring? But he said, well, yeah, you can tie me up and you can take me, but just promise me you won't kill me. Mm -hmm. And then when he got it, he just broke the ropes and whooped them all up and everything, you know, because God was still with him even in his sin. Mm -hmm. yeah. God can be with a sinner that claims he knows God, mm -hmm. and he'll still be with you to do his will. But the day of reckoning is coming. Mm -hmm. You won't always get away. Mm -hmm. Jesus. In 1 Samuel 3, 1. The boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. In those days, the word of the Lord was rare. Mm. There were not many visitors. Boy, that's just something you could park on right there. Mm -hmm. In those days, the word of the Lord is very rare. Because mm. I look at all these people trying to take and mix politics with religion and religion with politics, mm -hmm. and they're more political than they are spiritual, mm -hmm. and they're worshiping man over God. The most worst be party over God, heritage over God. You know, that, that's not what God calls us to do. There's no such thing as a white Christian or a black Christian yeah. because Christ supersedes whatever your background is. Yeah. You can't say, you know, we're just a bunch of us over here. <laughs> God don't play that. If you want to be with God, he goes back to souls. Mm -hmm. And souls don't have color. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so... You know, I don't think it's going to be white Christians and black Christians and Latino Christians. No, no, their souls don't have a color. That's, that's as, as the dirt and the clay has many colors. You can have red clay. You can have white, dusty dirt. You've got all <laughs> flavors of dirt. you got dark dirt. You know, just go around. I've seen dirt of all different colors from all over the world. You know, I remember we went to Mobile and they was eating the red clay dirt. Yeah, um, and I'm sitting there watching people eat, eat clay. clay. No, nah, nah, I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to eat no clay. <laughs> but, you know, but, you know, God was telling them, you know, Sam, Samuel ministered before the Lord, but there weren't many visions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And just like today, you know, I've had to re-question a lot of the things I were taught. I was taught a few years ago, and a lot of things in Christianity, people had all these rules and things, and talking about they anointed of God, they're telling you, you got to do this, you can't do that. And then you look at when they rise up something that's more important than the God, you know, Christians used to say that you can't be divorced and be a minister. They used to say you can't be divorced and be this type of leader and that leader. And then you take people that have broke all the rules you need and you exalt them to a place of worship. You know, God is going to punish that because, you know, the word of the Lord is very rare today. And many people aren't getting visions from him. So one night Eli, Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see, was lying down in his usual place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out. And Samuel was laying down in the house of the Lord where the ark of God was. Now see, Samuel had such an anointing on his life that he was able to sleep where the ark was kept. Wow, wow. Now, if you read and you study the customs and courtesy, when the priest went in once a year to offer sacrifice, they tied a rope around his leg. Because if he had some sin he didn't confess, he would drop dead. Mm -hmm. And you'd have to pull him out because nobody else could go in there because you don't know if all your sins was covered. You had to sacrifice a goat for you and then sacrifice a goat for the people, and then you could go in. You know, so, I mean, a lamb. So you had to be careful about this thing. And so, but Eli, this young boy from an early age, mm -hmm. he was able to be in the house of the Lord. He was getting trained. And then he was there with the ark of the God, but the light hadn't went out. And the Lord had pronounced judgment on Eli's family for sin. He rebuked Hannah for being drunk in the presence of God. And many times folks judge others harshly while overlooking the sins of their loved ones. See, there's a lot of times people want to tell you, you need to get it together, you need to get it that together. I remember when we first started pastoring, people would just love to tell me what my kids were doing. <laughs> they love to tell me where they saw my kid. Mm -hmm. And people don't realize that once they grow, mm -hmm. that's them. Mm -hmm. I can guide and correct them. I can put you on punishment, but you're 30, 40 years old. I can't come by your house and tell you no TV. <laughs> I can't come by your house and tell you, you can't come out this room till I tell you. Mm -hmm. Those days are over. <laughs> so 
They are of age. What 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 they tell the blind man's parent? What the blind man's parents say? You got questions, ask him. He, he's old enough to ask him. But people be looking at these days and they be trying to judge judge other people harshly or saying you're not punishing one for one thing and you letting other people get away with other things and they don't realize there's only one person on this planet that I can control. Mm -hmm. Me. And I have a time with that sometimes. You know, I'm just saying. I had to check myself before I wreck myself. You know, I'm just saying. You know? <laughs> but <laughs> some people, I've heard a lot of sermons on Eli being a slack father and being not doing the right thing. But the thing about it is you can't control grown men. Yes, yes. And they were grown men, and they may have killed Eli. They were so far mm -hmm. away from God. Yeah. When people try to act a uh, sacrifice meat, mm -hmm. and they say, no, nah, we want that meat for roasting. We don't want no boiled meat. And then they made a hook that had three prongs. They were supposed to use a one-prong hook to get the meat out. They got a claw. <laughs> they go ahead and dig the meat out. And then it said Eli grew fat when he got old. Eli's at the barbecue with him. Mm -hmm. You know, instead of arguing, he's sitting there roasting the meat with him. Right. And he's there to tell him, you shouldn't do that. Mm -hmm. But he couldn't control it. So, you know, <laughs> I'm not excusing Eli or his son's sins, but you have to come to realize that there's only one person you can control, and that's a full-time job. Right. But it says, it may feel like the lamp of God is going out. But there's still enough light for God to work in your life. Amen. Samuel was laying down. And sometimes it feels like your walk is drying up. And sometimes it feels like, you know, I'm doing the same thing again and again. I've been in and out of this stuff. Lord, when is the change going to come? Mm -hmm. But when you start to feel weak, he starts to get strong. Yeah. Yeah. And he was there for them. The lamp was going down, but it wasn't out. Amen. Then the Lord said to Samuel, then the Lord called Samuel. Samuel said, here am I. And then he ran to Eli and said, here am I, you called me. But Eli said, I didn't call you, go lay back down. So he went and lay down. Again, the Lord called Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, here I am, you called me. My son, Eli said, I did not call you, go back and lie down. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not been revealed to him. See, now he hadn't been there in a while because of the way they living. So a third time, the Lord called Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, here I am, you called me. <laughs> then Eli realized it was the Lord calling the boy. So has it been a long time since you've been on fire like a new believer? Mm -hmm. yeah, new believers always excite me, man. I mean, the little prayers and little things they request to God, and the way they talk to God, it's exciting. Because mm -hmm. all this stuff is new. They, they be reading the word and coming up with stuff. And I remember one time when I first got saved, I was reading that Paul was a son Paul's son was Timothy. I remember underlining that in my Bible. Oh, that's Paul's son. But then as I grew, I realized that was his spiritual son. But I thought I'd found a nugget. That's, that's Paul's son, Timothy, you know? <laughs> but as you grow in the word, you learn the word, you get better in the word, you understand the context of the word. But he, some of us that got so comfortable in our divine relationship that God may have to call you multiple times for you hear him. The cares of the world, the world can choke the word out of you. Yes, yes, yes. Bills, kids, yes. relationships, these things get the word out of you. So Eli told Samuel, go lie down, and if he calls you, say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Mm -hmm. So Samuel went and lay down in his place, and the Lord came and stood there calling, as at the other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel said, speak, for your servant is listening. Now that's a whole message by itself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Speak, because yeah. your servant is listening. Lord, what do you got to say to me? Speak. Mm -hmm. Speak to my heart, Lord. Mm -hmm. Speak to me. Mm -hmm. Speak, your servant is listening. Your finances are strained, Lord, speak to me. Mm -hmm. Your children acting crazy, Lord, speak to me. Your spouse acting crazy, Lord, speak to mm -hmm. me. You know, you, we, to let them know I'm listening. Lord, anything yeah. you got yeah. to tell me, just speak to me. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not asking you to speak to my spiritual leaders. I'm not asking you to speak to my cousin down the street. Lord, speak to me. Yeah. You got something to say to me, speak to me as yeah. you spoke to Samuel. Yeah. Speak to me as you yeah. spoke to Moses. Yeah. Speak to me as you yeah. spoke to Eli. Speak yes, to me. Yes, yes. Speak to me, Lord. Amen. Amen. And the Lord said to Samuel, see, I'm about to do something in Israel that make the ears of everyone who <laughs> hears about it tingle. Oh. Wow. <laughs> you know, they say when you want to get people's attention, you whisper. 
Because when you whisper, people lean in. <laughs> they know, that's a good thing. You gotta tell me something good. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know? So if, people, if you talk in a low voice, people will lean towards you. What, what, what was that? So, so he was speaking to him. He said, I'm about to tell you something that's gonna blow your mind and everybody else's yes, mind. Yes, yes, yes. Once your mind and your spirit is aligned with God, he will show you things that will cause your ears to tingle also. Mm -hmm. You'll be amazed at what God is going to do in your life. One thing I learned about God revisiting things. There's, there's plans and things that you put in your life in certain seasons and you say, well, maybe it's for my grandson or maybe it's for my granddaughter to do this, you know, because it didn't happen in my time, so maybe it's for somebody else. But God will revisit it in yeah. his time. Amen. He'll revisit it when he's ready. Mm. You know, if he said he's going to do it for you, He's going to do it for you. Amen. And then he said, at that time, I will carry out against Eli everything I spoke against his family from beginning to end. For I told him that I would judge his family forever because of the sin he knew about. Wow. Oh, his wow. sons blasphemed God, oh. and he failed to restrain them. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I swore to the house of Eli, the guilt of Eli's house will never be atoned for by sacrifice or offering. Uh -huh. Oh, man. 1 Samuel 2.25 says, if one man sins against another, God will judge him. Mm -hmm. But if a man sins against the Lord, who will intercede for him? Wow. Wow. Let, nevertheless, they did not heed the voice of their father because the Lord desired to kill them. Eli's sons were hardened because the Lord had already set up that he was going to punish them. He went to them. He tried to explain to them what you're doing is not good. What I'm hearing about you sleeping with the women in the temple, getting extra meat and taking, taking money out the tithes. What I'm hearing is not good. And he said the Lord hardened their hearts because he had already purposed to kill them. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you'd be so far on the path that God is already predestined. Amen. People say, well, why did he choose Judas to be the son of perdition? But the thing about it, it says Judas's heart was already going that way. Judas already was a thief. Judas already was dishonest. So when God put that in his spirit, it was because Judas was the perfect person for that situation. And Samuel lay down until morning. Then he opened his eyes of the house of the Lord. He was afraid to tell Eli the vision. But Eli called to him and said, Samuel, my son. Samuel answered, here am I. What is it he said to you? Eli asked, do not hide it from me. May God deal with you, be it ever so severely, if you hide from me anything he has told you. So Samuel told him everything, hiding nothing from him. Then Eli said, he is the Lord, let him do what is good in his eyes. That's a lifetime of faith. He's at peace with God's will. The longer you walk with God, you shed the desire to question his perfect will. Eli said, that's all right. If the Lord wants to do it, that's all right. If the Lord's going to destroy my sons and my house will never have another priest to serve him, the Lord's will is perfect. Amen. Wow. wow. Mm -hmm. He told the boy, tell me, a truth. tell me the truth or you'll be cursed. Mm -hmm. that was so, so he got all these other issues, but yeah. then he done put a curse on Samuel. If you lie to me, you going to be cursed. Mm -hmm. so, so Samuel had to tell him what the Lord said. You know, some people say you can't handle the truth. But he told them the truth. That God is going to destroy your family. And Eli said, the Lord is good. The Lord was with Samuel as he grew up, and he, he let none of Samuel's words fall to the ground. And all of Israel, from Dan to Beersheba, recognized that Samuel was attested as a prophet of the Lord. And the Lord continued to appear at Shiloh. And there he revealed him to, himself to Samuel through his word. Samuel ushered in the return for God's people to him. Mm -hmm. And his, his leadership was affirmed by God. During Samuel's reign, when Samuel spoke it, it happened. Yeah. When Samuel said this is going to happen, yeah. it happened. When Samuel said David's going to be king, David was mm -hmm. king. When yeah. Samuel told Saul, yeah. just as you tore my robe, God has tore this kingdom mm -hmm. from you. You know, Samuel, boy, Samuel had the word. People, he'd show up in town and visit, and people be, what's Samuel want? Mm -hmm. They come up to Samuel, you come in peace? Mm -hmm. Are you coming to bring, bring some on us? Mm -hmm. People would show up with offerings and stuff. Samuel, we hope you're happy with us. Amen. So Samuel grew such, such, in such might with the Lord. My first point, you cannot pray for a visitation. They're always on God's terms. Mm -hmm. 
but your ears need to be sharp like a junkyard dog. <laughs> you hear that first thing that he's getting ready to tell you. You got to have those ears perked up and listen. When God is ready to visit you, be ready in your spirit, be ready in your mind, be ready for what God has for you. A lot of people miss what God wants to tell them because they weren't listening for it. Amen. You got so many other things drowning out God in your life that you can't hear when God wants to visit you. Mm -hmm. Be ready for that visitation. My second point. I don't understand what God is doing. If you don't understand what God's doing, ask him to tear it with you until you understand. Mm -hmm. If you don't understand what God is doing, can, can you hold up for a minute? Can you take time and explain your perfect will in my assignment? Mm -hmm. You can ask God to make it plain. Mm -hmm. When you don't understand God's move, make it plain. In 2 Corinthians 12, 1, Paul had a thorn in the flesh. He said, it was ne if it is necessary to go on boasting, though it's not profitable. I will go on to visions and revelations from the Lord. I know a man in Christ who was 14 years ago, whether in the body or out the body, I don't know. God knows. Was caught up to the third heaven. And I know that, that this man, whether in the body or apart from the body, I do not know God knows. Was caught up into paradise. And he heard things too sacred to be put in words. Things that a person is not permitted to speak. Wow. On behalf of such an individual, I will boast, but not my own behalf. I will boast except, I will not boast except about my weakness. For even if I wish to boast, I would not be a fool, for I'd be telling the truth. But if I refrain, that is so no one may regard me beyond what he sees and what he hears from me. Samuel said, this vision is so deep. Don't get impressed with what God has told me. Don't get impressed with what God has done in my life. Don't get impressed with what you think you see in my life. Mm -hmm. He said, if I wanted to boast about how God has blessed me, then I could, Amen. but I won't. Amen. And so he says, oh, man, these things I've seen, I can't even tell you about. Mm -hmm. Even because of the extraordinary character of revelation, so that it will not become arrogant, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan, so troubled to me, so that I would not become arrogant. I asked the Lord three times about this. That he would depart from me. That it would depart from me. But he said, my grace is enough for you. And my power is made perfect in weakness. So then I'll boast most gladly about my weakness. So that the power of Christ may reside in me. Therefore, I'm content with weakness, with insults, with troubles, with persecutions and difficulties. For the sake of the Lord. For whenever I am weak, he is strong. Amen. Amen. So Samuel said, if God has put this on me to keep me humble, then I will boast about Amen. how God is punishing me, my spirit. Yeah, yeah. He's punishing my flesh. Yeah, yeah. God is not letting me get too caught up on things. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You know, I just look at, there's been different times I done had my 15 minutes of fame on different places and different things, but I never got stuck there. I've had accomplishments and things I've done that I shouldn't be doing. I've been places I shouldn't be and and God has gave me favor with people that I don't even know why he's giving me favor with them. But the thing about it is I don't get stuck there. I know there's seasons for everything. And I know God will exalt you at one time and then he'll pull you back down. Uh -huh. yeah. God won't let you get too high and too far. Yeah. No, don't think you just went in because you're the king's kid. Mm -hmm. and all that, you know, God yeah. always, that in this life you will have trials and tribulations. But be of good, good cheer, cheer for mm -hmm. I have overcame the world. The world. Yeah. Yeah. They don't say you're going to always have a pocket full of money. You're going to always be healthy. Yeah, yeah, Your vision's yeah. going to be like an eagle. It don't say none of that. Mm -hmm. It says you're going to have trials and tribulations. Mm -hmm. They said the old folks said when, when the Lord sends tribulation, you're supposed to tribulate. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's what they, you're supposed to wait till it stops. <laughs> and sometimes, and my last point, oh, man, is there a dream growing faint? And sometimes it seems like it's lost. Mm -hmm. Do you want God to revisit that dream? Some of us are afraid to dream. Mm -hmm. I remember when I was uh, taking African American literature, it was the first year at East High for it. And uh, we had to memorize things. And I memorized a poem by Langston Hughes. It said, what happens to a dream deferred? Does it dry up like a raisin in the sun? Or fester like a sore? And then run? Does it stink like rotten meat? Mm -hmm. I, I crust over like sugar, like a syrupy sweet. Maybe it sags like a heavy load, or does it explode? So what, what happens to this dream? Does your dream get so heavy it just explode, or does it fester like a sore? If you don't take care of your dream, 
If you don't maintain your dream, then your dream will start to wear out. It'll dry up like a raisin in the sun. Don't let your dreams die. God will revisit whatever you have on your heart. God has promised it to you. It will come to pass. And then one thing you have to look back and thank God for all the things he didn't allow to happen. Thank God for all the things he kept you from. And if you are humble and thankful that God kept you this far and he will walk with you all your days of your life, then you will be able to say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Amen. Speak. Yes. I'm going to tell you, oh man, it's just, there's so many things that I've let go that are coming back around. You know, like, I was comfortable with letting it go. I really was. I, I had moved on from this and moved off from that. Well, if this is what the Lord has chosen, then I'm fine. And then all of a sudden the Lord said, no, I haven't let that go. I haven't let that go. And when God tells you he's going to revisit something, believe it. Amen. He's going to revisit don't don't get too caught up in these other things with other people. Mm-hmm. You know, I was telling my daughter on the way to church, you know, that there's certain people on Facebook, I don't, my family members, I don't even go to their page. The page is full of so much mess, oh so much pornography and cussing and all that, and, and they send me a friend request I don't accept. <laughs> you ain't a friend of mine. <laughs> that's, that's you. I don't want none of my friends to go to my page and look at my friends and click on your page and say, well, you dropping it like it hot and all that. I don't want all that on my page. <laughs> you know, so, but, but you had to separate yourself. And then they think, you know, you think you better than me. No, I don't think I'm better than you, but I don't want to go back to where you are because I've been through that and I've moved on. Amen. I mean, I'm waiting for God to revisit my dreams. I'm waiting for God to revisit what I asked him for. Yeah. I, I'm rehearsing these things. I'm bringing them back up. And you things that I that got dusty, I don't put in the corner. I got to open that book and bring yeah. it back up. Yeah. And let the Lord know, will you revisit this? Yeah. Will you revisit this? This thing I've been asking for, I quit asking, but the Spirit is telling me now to open that door again. Ask again. Oh, knock until the door is open. Yeah, yeah. Seeking, you should find. He just told me all that. I'm seeking, knocking, and opening. <laughs> so don't don't get discouraged. God will revisit whatever you want him to. Amen. Ask the Lord, and you shall receive. Amen. 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 Does anybody here doesn't know the Lord is your Savior? There's but a prayer between you and eternity. Amen. You know that if you were to die today, you'd go to heaven. If you do go to heaven, and he asks you, why should I let you in? <laughs> you can't say because my mom was a Christian, my dad was a Christian, I went to Sunday school, I went to church, that won't get you in. The only thing that gets you in is the blood of Jesus Christ. You mm-hmm. accept him as Lord and Savior, and you shall be saved. Amen. There's no sin you've committed that God can't forgive. That's right. That's the right. unpardonable sin is to not ask for forgiveness for your soul. Amen. You can't recover from what you didn't ask for. Uh-huh. Yeah. But if you ask God, he will accept you. Amen. 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 So everybody knows where they're going on their day. Everybody mm-hmm. listen here. If you need any questions, we had 630-906-1392. Somebody will answer the phone. <laughs> we will make sure. Amen. So remember, God is with you. God is with you. Lord, I thank you for this day. I thank you for this message. I thank you for the proof that you've given us that you do revisit. Amen. Lord, as we continue to leave and live a legacy, mm-hmm. we want to live a legacy that shows you glory. Live a legacy that brings people to you. And Lord, we want to leave a legacy. We may not leave financial legacies, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. we're going to leave spiritual. Amen. Amen. We're going to leave spiritual blessings yes. that they won't be able to contain. Or they're going to just look back and say, look what the Lord has done. Mm-hmm. And I thank you, Lord, that you do revisit those things that we thought were long dead. Yeah. But there's still a flame. The lamp of the Lord has not went out. Mm-hmm. And I thank you for your faithfulness in all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you'd already turned it off. <laughs> I'm clicking, but it's